we have engineer surya prakash with us uh, so sir is engineer consultant mentor he is eminent engineer consultant mentor who has made significant contribution in civil engineering he did his btech in civil engineering from jnt uk and then masters in structures from iit madras and he worked as a design engineer and then established satyavani projects and consultants private limited in around 1994 Uh, he is also founder and mentor of Smart Infra EST, which is a trust dedicated to the civil engineering to enhance the employability and employment. He was president of uh, AWC EI in 2013-15 and is founding president of PSI in 2013. Sir is FIE, FACCI, MICE, etc., etc., etc. So, so I'm just making it short so that we can focus more on the the technical part of it. So today, sir, will be speaking on planning aspects of precast concrete construction as a solution to delivering larger scale projects. So over to you, sir. You can start sharing your slides. Thank you for a great introduction. And now I'll be sharing my presentation. Good evening to all the delegates, engineers from across the country, and uh, good evening, uh, Vinay Gupta ji, President ICI. and all the organizers from pune president of icci pune and uh, organizing secretary of this uh, semcon in fact i am somehow connected with semcon many times in pune live i made presentations in pune and uh, thanks for considering me in this interesting topic today and so the very topic of close to my heart is uh, planning aspects of precast concrete construction as a solution to delivering large scale projects which we are dealing right now in relation to precast concrete construction and uh, we'll be talking about precast technologies and elements about the elements and the 3d volumetric construction in precast and the 2d to 3d volumetric construction also and the planning aspects of precast concrete construction delivery of large scale projects and uh, general precast in buildings for residential commercial warehouse institutional and parking garages so these are the topics i'll be covering today and uh, majorly we all know precast why we prefer is uh, because of the hindrance that happens in the projects uh, when we do in situ construction and uh, climatic conditions like uh, very cold or very hot conditions that can happen in the project site and also the constraints at the site uh, which will require crash schedules and uh, parallel activities required in construction like while excavation is happening we make the structure and uh, mechanize the construction activity and enhance durability of the structures also i have chosen precast because of the better quality and uh, reduced carbonation in uh, concrete and the risk mitigation like uh, skill labor constraints and also cost constraints because escalation in cost is bound to happen when we do large scale projects because of the sudden spike in the demand for the material so through this precast we can have fixed cost delivery of the project and enhanced quality and better safety management and delivery assured delivery so these are all the reasons why we have to choose precast in building aspects the proposed structure is split into simpler segments produced as individual units and assembled in position to form the structure as we can see here and uh, we can uh, divide the entire structure into handleable size of the elements and also weight of the elements and assemble them at the site and the uh, joints though is uh, perceived as a challenge but any structural engineer can handle these joints who are uh, conversant with the precast construction methodologies and uh, available uh, materials uh, for the joints and uh, we can see the advantages of quality the conventional versus precast what i am showing here and also saving the time with reduced number of activities like no plastering no scaffolding required once we erect we can straight away go for fixing of the joinery doing the flooring and uh, painting directly and the uh, dimensional accuracy and the perfect finish which will give the aesthetic look and uh, better appearance of the facades and the permanent finish we all know when we go for plaster or rendering we know that there will be falling of the plaster and uh, cracks in the plaster all that 
But once we produce in the controlled environment, we have the concrete finish itself for the final facade, then you don't have all these problems and we have the permanent finish. And it is eco-friendly and uh, lesser labor dependence uh, compared to conventional construction that we do. And uh, lesser pollution on site, definitely. Uh, no dust in Delhi, we see every uh, winter commencing. We all know that the construction is stopped because of the pollution uh, that they expect. But with the precast, we can handle it, maneuver it very easily. So the methods of implementation that uh, today we focus on, we should be aware when we plan for the construction, what are all the uh, technologies available for producing various types of elements like uh, columns, light wall panels, structural wall panels, and uh, double T's and single T's, uh, which are normally used for larger spans, inverted T-beams, hollow core slabs, spandrels for the edge beams and the facade, and rectangular beam stairs, which is very advantageous, particularly in stairs, we know it is very difficult to handle the accuracy of the tread and rise that is designed. With the precast, we can straight away go for adhesive and the tiles or the stone fixing very easily and maintain the accurate tread and rise in the dimensions in the precast stairs. So this is one of the multi-level car parks, which we can see with the spandrel columns and the corner course for uh, elevators and staircase and uh, it will be very effective utilization of the space uh, including the ramps for parking to be utilized for parking and uh, we can also use uh, many types of precast structures like anything that is required we can convert into precasting primarily we are changing concreting from in situ to offside casting and then assembling at the site and uh, we can see uh, all the large span structures, uh, various shapes of the beams and uh, uh, slabs uh, it, that can be done. And a residential construction with the large panel, precast uh, panels, whether it is walls or slabs, we can thereby reduce the number of joints in the structure also. And uh, the joints that are hybrid, like we have the precast panel, we have the precast wall, precast slab, but the joint is in situ. This is uh, most prevalent in uh, UK, Middle East, and India. That can ensure the rigidity of the joint and uh, then also the performance of the joints. So this is a battery mold type of uh, casting of the walls where we need to form finish on both the sides of the wall. Normally we have this uh, tilting table uh, method of casting walls, which is cheaper in cost, but you will get the uh, trowel finish on one side and form finish on the other side. So a uh, battery mold is uh, a technology that is developed in the last 10 years and which is uh, being used in many of the projects, uh, which is very advantageous in terms of eliminating the any plaster re being required on the travel finish side, because both the uh, sides are form finished. And the extruded uh, type of panel like hollow core and slip formed uh, type of panels for the slabs, you can see the difference. Uh, and uh, normally these extruded ones will have almost very uh, less steel that too used only for pre-tensioning in the panels, all of them. So finally, the planning and design, we have to, as engineers, right from the conception of the project, we have to consider this method of technology depending on the time available and the size of project to be delivered. For example, I get a client who is asking me to deliver a project within one year to build about 10,000 houses or 20,000 houses. I have to complete in 12 months then I have no other option but to choose this precast because I can eliminate all the uncertainties in delivery and also the assurance of the delivery time with the quality not being sacrificed. You know, we have to draft the design intent and prepare the design basis based on this precast only. And uh, right now we have only handbook prepared by ICI in India and also some of the IS codes which can be used and interpreted for precast, but for the design, you can use a, a US Precast Concrete Institute manual, PCI manual. 
and uh, I was introduced, I founded a Green Unit Structure Society of India in India. And uh, we are also trying to work on bringing out a document on precast concrete construction and uh, loading structural systems, transportation handling joints to be kept in mind while drafting the design intent and doing the planning. That means right from the initial framing plan that we prepare, we have to consider the type of construction that we are going to propose so that we will be able to deliver in time that is available. And the general arrangement drawings, erection plans, shop drawings to be prepared by the consultants and uh, to be utilized uh, in uh, uh, production for the precast elements. Stripping, stacking, transport, handling stresses to be considered in the uh, design of these elements. And uh, these are all available in PCI code readily. And uh, analysis, uh, mainly in the analysis, the most important point that we have to keep in mind is the robustness. We have to do the gradual collapse of, of the structure and uh, consider the critical elements to fail and then still ensure the stability of the structure because we had some bad incidents in precast earlier in India where they are constructed without considering this robustness and also the checking the joints for the uh, all the loading conditions like size, seismic and uh, wind loads in, in case of high rise structure. Construction loads and erection loads to be considered and element design, joint design to be very clearly taken care and stringent quality, reduced tolerances and reduced partial safety factors, which can come in in future ports. Like, uh, as you're all aware, we use the same partial safety factor, whether we are doing precast, whether we are using the best construction company or whether we are using the very bad contractors or very bad construction practices. But with this precast, uh, if you do the uncertainty analysis and uh, we can save on the partial safety factors uh, and design, which is bound to happen in future, if not immediately, maybe in a decade or so. So this will help in uh, saving on the materials in precast when we use this uncertainty factors by using fuzzy logic. So the modular precast concrete elements for the buildings, I'm showing some of the sample detailing that we do, the level of detailing that goes into the precast, which is required. We can also see the stripping and the stacking and the handling stresses that we do. And we show in the drawing itself so that in the casting and the handling, they use the same method of casting, the stacking, stripping and uh, transport. And uh, these are all the bar detailing, which will almost go into the one is to one scale to check the facings and clearances in the joints and uh, reinforcement. This is the typical detail of a double T. And uh, these are the details of the end bearing parts of these uh, double T's which we have done. And we can even do the precasting of uh, portal frames like this. This is a real executed drawing. And you can see the handling, uh, stripping, stacking, and handling, how we have detailed. And uh, we consider all the CGs of uh, mass and stiffness, and then give this drawing. And uh, this is a hollow core drawing. And uh, these are inverted T beams. And uh, this is the detailing of an inverted T beam and the structural wall panels and the span uh, the edge beams, and the stair. Instead, you can see how we have given this uh, stripping and uh, stacking and uh, transportation handling of this uh, stairs. They're all shown in the drawing. And the structural systems, actually, we have many types of structural systems, framings we can do in precast, starting with the hollow core and uh, intermediate floors. And then medium rise buildings, we go for skeletal uh, normal frame systems. And uh, high rise buildings also, we can go with uh, skeletal systems. Uh, at least I'm aware of 40 to 50 storied buildings being done in precast. And the uh, precast structural systems with the uh, portal frame systems, skeletal structures, wall frame structures, and floor and roof systems, and facades. Facade alone can be precast also, like you can see in this uh, drawing. And load bearing precast walls, which is very common nowadays in residential construction, which is very advantageous because we can uh, prefix the plumbing electrical requirements in the walls and uh, erect very conveniently. 
and we purposefully increase the spans to make, increase the speed of construction by using hollow core because hollow core is advantageous in using for minimum of six meter spans. And otherwise, if we don't want to go for it, save cost on it, we can also go for large panel slab and large panel wall construction and have the joints only between the slab and wall. It's quite common in even in uh, regular conventional construction, you have the joints between the roof and columns uh, or beams. And we can also have single portal frames precast with a rigid joint and uh, large span uh, open spaces uh, inside the building is possible by using large span beams up to 50 meter spans. And we can also have typical uh, column beam junctions like this. This is a dry joint with a welded joint between the beams and column and be beams and uh, double T's. You can see the uh, steel plates that are there in this regard. Next, the recent developments is uh, waffle creed panels that can be used for in low cost uh, construction, where you can also have the larger panel with the lesser thickness of the concrete. And uh, they are readily available uh, vendors actually who can supply these uh, waffle creed steps. So, this is how uh, restroom facilities that can be developed with the waffle creed technology and a wall panel. Next, uh, ICI handbook. As I mentioned, I, I really appreciate ICI for bringing out this handbook almost like nine years back itself. Next is the casting, stacking, transport, and the erection. So, casting like any conventional, but off the site, we'll be doing the casting by tying the reinforcement and handling hooks and uh, wall panel stacking. You can see here and the handling hooks uh, for lifting and uh, handling. And then uh, this is the stacking of the beams that we do and the handling of the slabs or wall panels that can be done. And there are all the panels and uh, transportation of the panels. We need the large trailers. Why I'm showing all this is when we consider the precast, we have to also consider the accessibility to the site and the clearance of the site without power lines or distribution lines. And all we have to keep in mind how a trailer can reach the site and how a crane can lift and erect these uh, panels. Maneuverability of these large panels. Here you can see how much open space is available. So this is also important to have enough uh, open space around the building. For example, this one lakh square foot building is completed in a month's time. And even in India, we have many examples of uh, shopping malls of two lakh square feet being completed in two months time. So these are also some of the junction details and uh, multi-level parking garages. And these are some of the demolding of the wall panels, which is the simplest technology. We can even set up this uh, casting of the wall panels at the site itself, depending on the time availability and number of panels to be cast every day. And transportation of the panels and the erection of the panels. And uh, this is the precast wall panel erection typical photograph. And this is the partial slab forms where we can uh, do the partial precast and partial in situ with the solid wall uh, slab panel also. And uh, precast staircases and uh, precast wall panels and uh, column and beam precast with the joints. And this is the wall panel casting typical photograph and the hollow core panel erection you can see. And uh, this is the aesthetic finish. We have acid finish and a texture finish and this kind of aesthetic uh, treatment of the windows uh, also is possible. And uh, this is the precast wall panels photographs and foundations also precast can be done. It is done in uh, Tamil Nadu in one of the housing projects and uh, dovels for the wall panels. This is interface between the cast in situ wall and uh, precast wall and uh, precast wall panels erection. This is one of the projects we did uh, in Goka sourcing up to 11 floors. We have completed four towers of about two and a half lakh square feet in four months time, finished and handed over. From the date of handing over the site, we handed over the towers, four towers of about two and a half lakh square feet in four months. So that is why I always say for delivery, the precast is a very viable solution and we completed 4,000 units in a combination of precast, MIMO, 
and uh, conventional within 12 months without escalation in the cost and uh, at a cost of 1280 rupees per square feet. So these are all some of these uh, photographs, stacking of the wall panel, handling of the wall panels, transportation and uh, erection. And uh, this is how we start planning. We do the unit plan. We try to bring in the repeatability of these uh, wall panels and the slab panels. And uh, we develop these uh, different sizes into block. And uh, we also develop these blocks into combining MIG and make a layout like this. This is the, we develop this keeping precast in mind so that the modularity and repeatability is uh, kept and maintained. And this is another option of same blocks being used, but uh, in a different aesthetic uh, layout that we have done. And uh, we are working on many projects across the country on this mass housing, where this is one of them, which we completed actually. So here you can see the blue color blocks are all precast, and uh, this uh, green color is my one, and the gray color, brown color is all uh, conventional. So in the same project, we have implemented three technologies and could deliver in time without affecting the cost, but uh, with a good quality in construction, even in low cost. So these are all some of the photographs of this during construction and uh, after completion also. And in infrastructure also, we happen to work on a metro project in Gungam where we use this precast uh, I beams in uh, station buildings and uh, had gone for a very elaborate detailing, and we could deliver the quality. And the school buildings also, and uh, some of the machine availability and uh, copilers that we use uh, in precast are slip formers and extruders and uh, profilers. And the batching plan, which is common, we all know, only the mixed design has to be considered. Considering the, for example, for hollow core, we need a concrete with a water cement ratio of 0.2 to as low as 0.2. And the EOD cranes will be required and the stacking, handling the uh, A-frame cranes and all that. And uh, these are all the precast wall panels, that is casting yard for the wall panel and the batching plan and the casting and the preparation of the mold and reinforcement and tying placing of these uh, various uh, services also is done and uh, concreting and uh, panel stripping lifting and this is the concept of commercial like this is what we prepared as a 3d view and this is what we deliver and uh, this is the completed product you can you cannot make out the difference between precast my one and all three are there in this uh, photograph so that is the advantage of uh, using the technology for assuring the delivery of the product. And this is the photograph uh, before completion. And another project of commercial uh, industrial flatted industry that we have done and uh, with the 12 meter spans uh, with the five story industrial floor, which we have done and completed. And this is during construction of the photograph. And another office building that we have done in Vijayawada a two lakh square feet again completed in six months uh, time and this is the photograph inside you can get the quality of it and the entire feeling will change actually with the quality of the finish that we get with the precast and this is another CRD office building that we have done in the world and uh, secretariat interim government complex in AP also we have used the precast beams and uh, this was and uh, we are right now doing an institutional building a completely precast with the brick wall finish that is uh, nearing completion for handing over. And half now, I'm coming to the main important point today I wanted to cover, which we are implementing right now, is the 3D volumetric modular construction with a half day cycle of production. That means with the same mold, I can produce two houses in a day with one mold. That means if I have one mold, I can produce 600 houses in a year that kind of uh, speed in delivery which is possible and uh, we will be set, setting up the project specific plants and we have the mold manufacturers in india itself and the three layered vendors we have mold uh, supplier we have the production contractor very precast production contractor and uh, general contractors 
who will be assembling and who will be developing the external services and all. So delivery of uh, 4,000 DUs per annum minimum, if you have, this technology will help a lot. And uh, so this is the plant setup that we get. Uh, that is the mold for a casting of the entire module of a house. Then this is how the stripping will be done, collapsible internal uh, form. And then we'll be having, uh, this is the reinforcement being tied and we have the slab below. And uh, we will be lifting the inner mold like this and uh, ca after casting, we have different technologies again in uh, 3D volumetric itself. And uh, so this is the demolding and uh, lifting of the module and then uh, uh, checking uh, quality before dispersing. And uh, this is the entire unit of the EWS housing, you can say, or we can also make the units into two, three mods like this, even at bigger uh, houses. And uh, erection of this uh, 3D volumetric boxes into a house like this. So this is the planning that we are doing for production of the houses and delivery of the houses to the tune of 4,000 houses in a year. Next is 2D to 3D. That means uh, we cast 2D large construction. The assembling of the unit is done in the plant itself and we transfer the 3D house. This is already happening in India. We have vendors in Bangalore, we have vendors in Coimbatore and uh, already some projects are completed from 2D to 3D method and transport and direction of pre-assembled models. So this is about what I wanted to share. We are working on this uh, delivery of these uh, projects with the complete precast. And uh, I thank uh, Simcon for giving me this opportunity and ICI for uh, allowing me to share this knowledge. And uh, probably we can open the house for uh, questions. Yes. Thank you, sir, for uh, extensive and detailed presentations. We have a lot of questions, so I'll just try to combine and uh, I'll take a few questions now. So we have questions from two or two people about the joint, so I'll just combine them. So uh, they would like to understand. So it is from Mr. Desai. So he uh, would like to ask about how the joints are made rigid in precast construction. And there's another question from Mr. Ashwin. So he's also asking about how the results of for leakages in the structure for precast residential building, how the joint ceiling is done. So rigidity and the ceiling, uh, joint ceiling. Actually, uh, we have many methods of detailing for the joints. I mean, I can share those details if somebody is interested. I have shared my phone number and uh, mail ID. But yeah. I would like to quickly tell you. Even in our conventional construction, we have a cold joint between the beam and slab, uh, column, for example. So what is happening is the reinforcement that is required is going into that. The difference between uh, precast and conventional is in precast, we have two different elements. And uh, we are having what we call loops that, that we have in both elements and will be grouting the uh, non string grout into these uh, joints to make the joint capable of taking the forces, whether it is shear or flexible stresses. There are many methods of uh, joint detailing. I have a separate presentation for joint detailing itself. So I can share that and the details depending on the case people are uh, planning to transfer. How to take care of the leakage so that there should not be any leakages? Actually, leakage is a result of bad detailing and the bad quality anytime, whether it is precast or cost in situ. So it is always good to have good detailing practices. We have uh, buildings where we don't have leakages at all, where the detailing air is taken. Yeah, right. Totally agree, sir. So uh, we have another question from uh, Milan. So he's asking, uh, is it possible to fix household amenities on the wall? Like what about the plumbing and electrification work? Is it concealed or outside? Yeah, yeah. we have concealed only electrical and plumbing. We have done, the thing is we use the flexible PPR pipes so that uh, at the joints also we can connect these uh, plumbing lines or electrical uh, fundings. 
so can you just uh, let the audience know the is codes uh, used for precast construction starts with the 4000 series actually uh, we okay. have a precast concrete code mm -hmm. but it's been updated with the latest technology and uh, any code has to start with a manual or handbook which ICA has uh, initiated actually. So yeah. we can all work as a fraternity and uh, further take into the portal form. So we have another question from Professor Deepak MD. So he's asking what are testing methods for ensuring quality post erection of precast panels? Yeah, main like uh, joint, we have to do the testing. And whatever, the, when we have uh, multiple uh, repetitions, like 100, more than 100 repetitions, uh, as for the code itself, we have to do one prototype test. And the elements, we do the testing as a rule, like uh, slab panels, wall panels, individual panels, we do the testing. And for the joints, we have to do the prototype test. One last question. So is it sustainable in high seismic zone or how the seismic zones are to be uh, considered in the designing phase? Yeah, for example, the uh, US California is the state uh, with the highest uh, seismic activity, but there also precast is done. And in India also, we are working in northern India and all. And uh, the, we will uh, do, consider all the seismic provisions by design. Thank you, sir, for your uh, detailed presentation. Our another sponsor, Sika, here with us. So I would request the team Sika to come on the dais and request them to present their products and services. This side, Sachin Musale from Sika India. I look after the specification part for South Zone and West Zone. So I'll be just presenting on you know company profile for Sika. So we are Sika. So as you know, everybody is knowing about Sika construction. We are into a specialty chemicals and you know, a company with a leading position in you know uh, development and production of you know systems. So Sika at a glance, globally we have got you know 25,000 employees. We have got a presence in more than 100 countries. Uh, we have got plants, you know, more than 300 plants across the globe. We, last year we have you know started uh, new plants and expansion for the six plants. We have got patented for 83 products in 2020. We have also, you know, acquired company last year. One company we have acquired. And recently we have also acquired a big company that is MBCC in 2021. Last year turnover is around 7.88 billion CHF. It's closely around 60,000 crores in Indian rupees. So <clears throat> this is about the Sika India. Sika. So we have, you know, markets like concrete. We have got a presence in concrete. We have got a market like, you know, waterproofing, roofing, building finishing, flooring and coating, sealing and bonding, refurbishment and industry. So we have got this market. So we have got the opportunity from Simcon to, you know, talk on the uh, grouts products, especially for the precast uh, buildings and for the sealants. So we'll have a, you know, brief uh, discussion on the grouts and the sealants later by this presentation. I'll just play a small video for your understanding.
thank you. that's it from our side.